All right, a continuing 2016 eighth grade math star test. I'm on question 23. You've got a scatter plot. It's talking about working and relaxing, don't we wish? Um, now down here, this says work. Those are hours. Over here, this is hours, but this is recreational activities. So if you work 10 hours, you have five hours of recreation. Is that true? No, I've got to go up here. If you work 10 hours at work, you, you're probably spending a lot of time doing recreational hours because you're not at work. You have more time to do this. If you're not at the work, you can be at home. This means at home, in case you're wondering. The more you're at work, the less you're at home. Yes, this is true. Even I recognize this, even right now. Now, based on the scatter plot, what is the best predictor of this average number of hours a person spends each day and work every week if that person spends an average of 10 hours on recreational activities. Find recreational activities and find 10. Now that does not say recreational activities, but this does. So here's my 10. So I want to look at this area right here. Now, I tried, and that's the good word, tried, to draw me a straight line. I don't have a ruler on this math test, so I used my handy dandy uh, map pencil and drew a straight line. It's hard to draw a straight line with a map pencil, but it's not bad. If you look at my line, I should have moved it up. Do you have the same number of, of uh, ordered pair on top as you do on bottom? No, I only have three on the bottom, and I got a whole bunch on top. My line needs to go up more, so it's too low, but that's it'll work for right now. Now, I took your choices A, B, C, D. And I plotted them on the graph. You're supposed to predict which one of these dots is going to be in this pattern. Now I'm going to tell you right now, why would it jump back? No. Why would it jump way ahead? No. It's either C or D. And do you think these points are going to go back down? Or do you think they're going to continue in that pattern? You're right. Answer is D. And I think that's a great way to, uh, to prove my work. I don't really need 1, 2, 3. My 1, 2, 3 is right up there. All right, I'm on question 24, and it says there's four triangles are drawn. I see those. Now, if, for those of you trying to pick which one you should circle, A, B, C, D, can you show me where A, B, C, D are written? That's a good point, good point. So down here are where the A, B, C choices are. So if you're trying to pick one of those four triangles, you can stop trying to do that because that's not going to work anyway. It says, based on these triangles, which statement is true? Well, let's just read. W equals W equals W equals W equals. I think you should go find W. Now let's look at these triangles. Do you see a W? Um, uh-huh, me neither. What about that one? Mm-hmm. And this one? Yep, and oh, there it is. Found it. Now, what's the purpose of the other three? I think they're trying to teach you something kind of quickly. Um, what is this straight line? Yes, you're right, 180. And from here to here is how much? Yes, 180. And from here to here is how much? Yes, 180. And what's the degrees of a triangle? 180. So to find this problem, we're going to use what they're trying to teach us. These three inside this triangle make 180. Now how would you type that in the calculator without cal typing in 14 entries? Let's not waste too much time. How would you do it? I need one entry. Think about it. If the triangle is 180 degrees, then if I subtract the other two parts, I think I'm left with the third piece. How about 75? Excellent. So I can tell you Z is 75. But, by the way, that's not the answer to W. Now, if you pick F, that's great. Too bad you can't read. It said W. That's, that's not a W. But what is W? Didn't we say from here to here is 180? Now, how would you get that in the calculator with one typing entry? Oh, you're right. How smart. That would be 180 subtract 75. 105. You need to find the 105 answer. G. Now, I do love H. That's a good one. So, from here to here, which is less than a line, is more than 180. Uh-huh. That's, that's interesting. Next. Question 25. Which set of ordered pair was a function? Now, y'all should be good at functions. So, what are our 1, 2, 3s? Number 1, function. How'd you guess? Number 2, X's don't repeat. Never, ever, ever. Now, I drew you a picture of some mapping, just in case you need that info. Remember, it was the kids that came to my door, not the table. So the kids showed up, and I assigned you a table. The, no, I didn't see any tables at my door. This one is okay, so this kid needs to sit at this table. This kid needs to join them. That's okay. Two people can sit at a table. We have that happening. And this kid sits here alone. Whoops, hope some more can show up. What about this table? This kid here, I'm going to cut you in half with my chainsaw, and you're going to sit half here and half here and don't drip on the floor. I'm going to have to assume that's a bad day for you, and it wasn't a great day for the table. Now, let's look over here at choice A, B, C, D. They say the answer is A. Now, let's prove it. You have a 2, 
a 4, a 6, and an 8. Those sound different to me. What's wrong with B? A 0, a 1, a 1. Whoops, you got 2. Nope, nope, nope. What about here? 3, 3, forget it. 1, never mind. The answer is A. Question 26. I've got a circle, and it's talking about dilation. And let me zoom out. There's your picture. Circle 1, circle 2. I'm going to have to assume circle 1 was first, and then circle 2 was second, since it seems logical. And if you read it, it says, which rule applies to dilation of circle 1, 2, circle 2? So it went from 1, and it's going to 2. So this would be your A, and this would be your A prime, if you wanted to go back to that. Now, let's look at my 1, 2, 3s. There they are. Aren't they pretty? Number one, dilation. How'd you guess? Number two, it should look like a number in front of the x, comma, a number in front of the y. That number can be a whole number. It could be a fraction. It could be a mixed number. It could be an improper fraction. I don't care. Multiplication is a dilation only. Adding is translation. That's slide only. And we don't add or multiply for reflection. By the way, there would be subtraction here, too, if you go right, left. But we don't do either for reflection. Now let's go over here and look. I see multiplication. That'll work. At least not dumb. That one will work. Adding, that's translation. No. And my that's still translation. No. Because you're going down and then you're going left for this one. This one would be going up. Excuse me. This one would be going right and then up. And that one was going left down. Now let's look at these two. Didn't you start with circle at one? That's the little one. And then you go to circle two, the big one. So you went from little to big. Which fraction is going to make something bigger? Pick a number. I don't know. Four. Excellent. Take four times three eighths and see if you get a number bigger than four. Did you? No. All right, try the other one. Do 4 times 8 thirds and see if you get a number bigger than 4. You're right. It's this one. If you multiply by something bigger than 1, you tend to get a bigger number. It's just amazing how that multiplication works. And if you multiply by a number less than 1, you get a smaller number. 3 eighths is less than 1. This will make you smaller. This makes it bigger. If I want to gain 10 pounds, I don't go on a diet. I think I eat another ice cream. Question 27. It says the manager at the restaurant recording how many people were different groups of customers and how these people spent money on food. The scatter plot below shows the data. Excellent. Pretty picture. I drew in a line, and I tried to do the best I can, and I used my ruler. Yeah, my map pencil. And um, I did start at zero, 0, and the question is, why? Why would I start at zero, 0? If nobody goes to the restaurant, how much money was spent there? Uh, yeah, you're right. None. That's why I started at zero. Now, it says, based on the scatter plot, how much money would a group of 10 people be expected to spend on food and drinks at this restaurant? By the way, a beverage is a drink. Now, I'm going to plot these points where it says for 10. So, give me a second. Now, here's my graph. I went back and placed A, B, C, D on that graph. Now, remember, I'm estimating with my line, but that line's a good visual to help me place numbers. I'm thinking D is definitely not going to be on that line, and C looks wrong, too, so I can take those two off. The question is, is A or B closer to that line? And, yeah, really, A is closer to the line. Answer is A. And that's probably the best way to solve those. Place all your points on that line, and then look at it. Draw that straight line in. Use the other pencil you're supposed to bring. You're right. You're supposed to. Question 28. You've got your mapping going on. It says which one is which one describes the mapping. In other words, who's true and who's false. So I'm assuming three are wrong and one's right. Now, I told you right here, these are my kids. First day of school, kids show up. I've never had any tables show up. And kid negative one is going to sit at this table. The second kid at my door is going to sit here. The third kid at the door, this number two here, is going to sit at table seven, and the the fourth person in that line it will also join them. So I didn't chop any kids in half. So this is actually okay. This is good for the kids. Now over here, my one, two, threes, functions, and I wrote x's don't repeat. By the way, those are the x's, and you're right, they didn't repeat. I didn't chop anybody in half. That's a good day. Now let's read down here. I kind of marking things because uh, there's too many words for me, and I just like too many words. It says the mapping represents function. That means the mapping is a function. I would have to agree it is. The next one, mapping does not. Now 
that's wrong. It does. G is out. The next one says mapping represents function. That means the mapping is a function. I agree. And J says does not. No, that's not true. It is. So these mean false. And these mean true. And you just said the answer was true. So I can tell you J and G are wrong. And by the, by, by the way, H is probably the answer. Now, why is H right and F wrong? What's the difference? Let's read. I see the mapping represents Y as a function of X because, I'm assuming the uh, because is the reason, because the Y values correspond to exactly 1X. And this one says because the X values correspond to exactly 1Y. Who's in charge? Kids or tables? Yes, you're right, kids. Finally, your turn. You're in charge. That means you, the X, are in charge. The table didn't pick you. You were picked to a table. If I said pick a table, the table didn't jump up and pick a kid. You were able to pick. X's are in charge. Answer is H. Question 29. A cylinder and its dimensions are as follows. And aren't you lucky they gave you their radius? For those of you dividing by two, that's terrible. Um, that would assume this is the height. And before we get, yay, it's as easy, let's pay attention. Is everything in centimeters? The radius in centimeters, the height's in centimeters. Are the answers in centimeters, or did they change them to feet to make us look stupid later? Which expression can be used to find square centimeters? So you're okay. And by the way, square centimeters, mm-hmm, volume is to the third. I need square centimeters. So that's, you need to be paying attention to what you're doing. And none of the above is available. Now, let's continue working. You're supposed to be finding what? It says, one equation for calculating the volume of a cylinder is volume equals base times height. I already started. You're right. My cylinder is my title, my action word, and then volume is capital base times height. It was on the formula chart, too, but they did tell you. B represents the area of the base. Yes, you know that. And you're right. I should draw a little circle. Whoops. And I should shade it in. I'll go with red. It seems like a pretty color at the time. And it says... Which expression can be used to find the value of B? They only want B. That's it. Which expression can be used to find B? Now, if they're looking for only B, what number do you not need? Do you need height if I'm looking for this? No. What's the height number? 3.8. Go to your answer choices. 3.8 is wrong. Wrong. Yeah, correct. You're right. Now, how do you finish this part? You're right. Pi radius squared. What's next? I think 12.1 changes to the R. So pi, 12.1, and you put a little 2 there. Now, if you type in the calculator, and that's a 12, promise, and you get the answers. But if you look at the answer choices, I don't think you have to type it in. I need two of these and one of these. Now, if you look... A says you need two pies. I don't need a big two. I need a little two. Those aren't the same. No. This one says I need one pie. I like chocolate. You're right. How'd you know? And then I need two 12.1s. There's my 12.1. Answer is A. None of the above. Y'all better have a really good reason to pick that. You better not pick more than one on the test either. All right. Question 30. It says, using these diagonal lengths of the patio, you're supposed to do greatest to length. You are probably thinking hypotenuse. Nope, it's greatest to least. And you better be using that calculator. So, greatest to length is descending, and I drew a little picture of you going down the stairs. I hope you don't fall. And if least to greatest is ascending, greatest to least is the other one, descending. In your calculator, you would go to list one, input that data in, uh, whop in three numbers. And I would write the decimal answers to the side up there, so that way you know what you're doing when it's time to put them at least to greatest. Now, I actually went to the home screen and put those in for you. So, 4 square root 13, and I closed that door, is $4 and, excuse me, $14.42. And 14 plus 2 divided by 5, and you better know how to do that with a computation test, $14.4. And yes, yeah, you're right, 40 cents. And that's $14.33. And you know what? You should be able to put those in order. But you know what? I just don't have time to test that theory. You put them in the calculator and make sure they're right. Now, what do you think the answer is going to be? Which one's the biggest? Well, let's see here. They're all 14, and I've got a, this looks like first, second, 